Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. In this video I want to take a look at what's going on with Ubuntu 17.10. That is the Artful Aardvark release coming up in October. It is in beta. It just went into beta. And somebody actually asked me to do a video like this. Uh, I talked a bit on Facebook today about how I had been watching the development of Ubuntu 17.10 and uh, some very cool things are going on. This is going to be a very important release of Ubuntu because this is the first release that features the GNOME desktop by default. For those of you who have been living under a rock, Unity is going away and we are going to have GNOME by default. Uh, so in other words, Ubuntu GNOME will no longer be a flavor, it'll just be Ubuntu and a lot of really good work is going into the Ubuntu implementation of the GNOME desktop and they're sending a lot of that work upstream back to the GNOME project so a lot of things are being worked on which is pretty awesome so I want to go through this lovely article from Fossbytes where they kinda of just outline the release dates and things like that uh, we just got the beta on August the 31st the final beta is hitting on September the 28th the kernel freeze will be October the 5th, and then the first release candidate comes out on October the 12th. That's sort of like a final, final beta. They're not going to change anything at that point. They just want people to test it and use it and play with it and send your feedback uh, to them so they can fix it for the final release date. And the final release date is October the 19th. And uh, to tell you the truth, my experience with Canonical in the past, as far as releases are concerned, we really won't know what the final version looks like until probably October the 21st or the 22nd, because usually what happens is there's a flurry of updates on the final release day, and things do tend to change. So some new features worth talking about for desktop users. Well, GNOME is going to be the default desktop, and it's, uh, you know, it, GNOME won't be a separate flavor anymore. It's just going to be it. Uh, Wayland Display Server is going to be shipped by default. Now, there are a lot of questions about Wayland at this point. Wayland is a, a replacement for Xorg or the X server. And there are some questions about it like, are people with NVIDIA drivers going to be able to use it? Uh, also, the other question that I've heard and, and, you know, is what happens about X forwarding and remote desktops? So we'll see how that shakes out. Fortunately, you'll be able to run Xorg as a session, so you can choose whether you want to run Xorg or Wayland or whatever's going to work for you. Uh, also, as we listen to this video, remember this is really all up in the air and in flux, and as far as getting really accurate information is concerned, it just comes in in dribs and drabs, and so therefore there is a good chance that I probably might get something wrong in this video. So bear with me on that it's just we don't know how it's going to shake out yet they're still working on it uh, kernel 413 and maybe 414 is going to be the main kernel uh, 413 was just released or is going to come out very very soon so I'm a, you know 413 is definitely for sure uh, let's see if there's anything else on this list uh, that really jumps out GDM of course is the default display manager GDM is awesome uh, what else do we got here 4k uh, multi-monitor improvements so that's something nice for you guys who have really big monitors um, yeah so anyway there you go the uh, minimal install images are getting smaller well that's nice too I guess okay so you can come and look for this article if you like I will put a link to it in the description for the video let's jump over and look at the desktop and talk about some more in-depth things uh, this is the latest update as of about maybe 10 minutes before I started recording this video. I ran updates, rebooted the machine, and this is what I've got so far. So here's your login screen. Looks just like standard GDM, except uh, one of the later updates changed the color of it, which is all right by me. And we can log in as regular Ubuntu with Wayland, or we can log in with Xorg. Now I'm running this in a VirtualBox virtual machine, so I may be running Xorg anyway, so I'm not gonna mess with that. I don't know whether Wayland works at all with VirtualBox, so it may have just went back to X on its own. It really doesn't matter. I do not have, uh, or do not appear to have um, 3D acceleration with the drivers that are in the kernel, and I have not installed the drivers from the uh, VirtualBox disk simply because I don't think they'll work. 
I'm waiting to see whether they come out with final drivers in the end. So this is what the desktop looks like. The only thing that I have done theme-wise is to make the fonts a little bit bigger. So nothing has changed here. This is what it looks like. And they sent down uh, some theming changes just the other day. So when I first installed this from beta, or rather for when it was an alpha about a week and a half or two weeks ago, this was a black bar at the top. And you see that now it's changed. It looks more like the ambience theme that you saw in the Unity desktop. This over here, which kind of looks like the launcher in Unity, is not. This is um, Dash to Dock. It's a plugin that comes with GNOME. You can do it with any GNOME desktop if you like, Dash to Dock plugin. I'm not a big fan of Docs, uh, but what they have done is they have taken the Dash to Dock plugin and they've modified it. So it acts more like the Unity launcher than Dash to Dock does. And so like if I full screen this, just maximize it, then you'll see that this doesn't go away. It sits there, whereas Dash to Dock, usually the default behavior is to disappear. Move the uh, buttons over to the right again, because so many people said they wanted them there. So that's a, another little change. Down here is where you can look at all the programs. And this is just like the the program button that you find in regular GNOME and it's not remembering what programs I've opened up but I have had quite a few things open on this machine so there you go I did remove Firefox and put Google Chrome on here simply because I use Google Chrome on everything and by the way if you are one of those people who have been following my videos I, I put up a video about uh, choosing Google Chrome and explaining why I liked it better than other browsers and all that other stuff. And uh, some people have threatened to unsubscribe because I use Chrome. So if you don't like that I use Chrome and you feel it necessary to unsubscribe, go right ahead. Just don't bother to put anything in the comments because I, I don't care. It doesn't bug me. You know, <laughs> whatever. I don't care what you use. You go right ahead. It's fine with me. And if you feel that strongly about it, more power to you. Anyway, uh, let's see here. The desktop is active. It is set up to be active, which is nice. Uh, GNOME, by default, does not come with an active desktop. T-W-E-K. Yeah, thank you. Here's the tweak tool. I had to install this. And extensions don't work right now. Well, they say here that you notice that we get these two extensions, uh, the Uben Ubuntu applications and, and doc, but we don't have the regular GNOME extensions here yet. So I'm kind of curious about this. And also, if I open up Google, uh, I should have the GNOME integration plugin pop up over here, but you see I don't have that. So it's not working with their version of the desktop just yet. I don't know why, but it ain't. So I can't really like tell you whether standard GNOME extensions work or not because they don't seem to be active at this point. Um, you have to do a little bit more research about that. I'm hoping that by the time the final release comes along that that'll all be functioning because there are some uh, GNOME extensions that I really like that I would like to install. Like the left-hand corner here, I don't like the fact that the hot corner is on. That's an extension. And, of course, this is a virtual machine, so I don't know whether it is or not. Hot corners usually don't work in virtual machines. So to get to the activities there, you have to click. So we'll see. That's one of those questions that remains kind of out there. So according to the beta right now, the uh, kernel version we're running is 4.12.0-12. As far as memory consumption is concerned, um, well, right now it's under a gig, and I have opened up some software. Uh, my Ubuntu 1604 desktop, when it opens up, takes about a gig of memory. And when I open up this version that Ubuntu is working on with their modifications, it's about 750 megabytes. Uh, so there you go. That's the difference. Now, a lot of people who, you know, see GNOME take up a gig of memory, they get really upset. They're like, oh, that's sucking up all my system memory. It's just, it does a lot of caching. It's to uh, enhance the performance of the desktop. If you get to a situation where you need that memory to run an application, GNOME will actually happily dump the cache or swap the process into the swap or whatever needs to happen. So yeah, don't don't rate the performance on that. I mean, I know some, some computers won't run GNOME very well. I mean, if you had like a 
machine that had two gigabytes of memory in it, you wouldn't be running the GNOME desktop on it anyway. So it's really a modern desktop for modern machines. Just pointing that out there because some people go, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. But if you have the machine to make it happen, it, it's pretty awesome. Uh, let's see. Another thing about the Ubuntu. Let me get back into a terminal to show you this because it's easier. Uh, and I mentioned this in a previous video, but it was at the end of the video. So I'm going to go back through this for anybody who hasn't seen that. Okay, so our standard system, uh, when we install it, will in the past for Ubuntu create a swap partition. That does not happen anymore. Ubuntu now creates a swap file. So what it will do if you just do a standard install and you let the thing uh, partition your drive is it's going to create one big happy ext4 partition and then it is going to create a swap file within that partition. And um, this is done for a lot of reasons. First of all it makes more sense with SSDs it also makes more sense to have a swap file which is going to be significantly smaller than the amount of memory in the computer if the computer has a lot of memory in it already. They have an algorithm in the installer that chooses, it goes by a table and figures out exactly how much swap space you're going to need for the memory that you have in the machine and then it puts it on the hard drive. So having the swap file in place means that the uh, trim feature for your SSD, which is something that happens automatically in Ubuntu anyway, is going to be able to work with that and it's going to be able to do the stuff that it needs to do and the drive will have a better time where leveling out any swapping that does go on. Of course, with a lot of modern computers these days, we really don't worry too much about swap. Swap is for the kernel's benefit if it should decide to swap out a process. Some programs these days need uh, you know, uh, need swap space, so don't run your machine without swap. But Ubuntu is really making that nice. As a matter of fact, on my host computer, I create a swap file and do that these days for Ubuntu. Not for Linux Mint, but for Ubuntu. I do that, so it's a nice way to go. Um, so how does that work, by the way? Let's take a look and see how they implemented that. So I'm going to run, uh, let's see, let's do uh, sudo nano etc fs tab and we'll see how they do that so yeah you see this is just a really standard way to implement a swap file right here matter of fact if I open up my host I say this is the uh, host let me show you I have got it set up exactly the same way I just did it manually so if I do sudo nano uh, etc fs tab we'll see the same thing. So pretty much the same thing there. So there's where the swap file is. Of course in this I've got a couple of drives in the machine so it's not exactly the same but you see how it works. And for those of you who uh, worry about performance hits because it's a swap file and not a swap partition uh, don't worry about it. Every kernel developer that I have heard from or read articles from say that the kernel doesn't care where the swap is. It makes no difference. And I'm sure that Ubuntu is tuning it up to make it work nicely. So I can go ahead and close that terminal. So what else is there to talk about? Um, well, I mean, not a whole lot. Um, I did do an experiment where I cloned this machine and then I went through and tried to get all the software that I ordinarily install, so the stuff that I use day to day, it was all available to me, and I was able to uh, install. I was able to install a lot of software, everything that I use, uh, even third-party stuff. So I won't go through the list or anything, but I was really impressed because in the past, uh, when they have gone into the newer releases, sometimes that's been a problem. You had to wait on it. Not this time. Everything seems to work really well. Uh, Simple Screen Recorder is now in the repository, so thank you very much to the Canonical folks for doing that. And everything else was available. This is going to be an awesome release. Now, will I use this myself? Uh, the answer to that question is most likely no. I do not ordinarily use interim releases, but I'm still keeping a very close eye on it because we will have Ubuntu 18.04 coming along in April. It's just uh, six, seven months away now, and that is going to be really awesome. And the Ubuntu folks, Canonical has promised 
that for those of us who are running Ubuntu 16.04, either the GNOME edition or the Unity edition, whichever one you have, that there's going to be a direct upgrade path for us. So all we got to do is upgrade our computers in place once that kicks in. So that is going to be pretty awesome. Of course, you could install 17.10 and then you could upgrade to 18.04 if you wanted to, to give it a shot. So there you go. Uh, it's all entirely up to you. I have really been enjoying using the uh, GNOME desktop. and I'm, I used Cinnamon for a long, long time. Most everybody else in my family used Cinnamon as well, most of my other machines. But just the other day, my uh, son came to me and he said, Dad, I'm having some problems with the Cinnamon desktop. Do you think I could try out GNOME? So I said, sure, I will I give you GNOME. And this is what it looks like on my machine, the main machine here. And of course, these are like the little plugins that I like to have. So, for instance, I like my open weather. That's kind of nice to have around, uh, just to keep an eye on things. And then one of the things that I changed or really wanted to have is there's a plugin. See, now this hot corner doesn't work, so I'm going to have to get that. I mean, just because. Let's see. Let's open up the text editor here. Well, well LibreOffice will be fine because I want to show you the alternate tab. I've changed how the alternate tab works. So if I've got more than one terminal open now, open a new window, I've got two terminals open. Well, so you should have two terminal open. Let's try that one more time. Open a new window. Thank you. Now you see I've got two terminals listed. The default behavior is to group them and what you have to do is like sit on it and then push another key to be able to see what you have open. So that's a plug-in that I like to have. <laughs> so there's a bunch I've got, a bunch of little things, not plugins, but in, you know, GNOME extensions. So anyway, there you go, gang. That is a look at the Ubuntu 17 uh, 1710, almost said 1704, coming up here very soon. So that should be, this is going to be an awesome release of Ubuntu, and it's going to be even more awesome when we get to 1804. And all of this active development going on in the GNOME desktop is just beneficial to everybody. Even if you are somebody who is not a mainstream Ubuntu fan and you run some distribution which is based on it, like Linux Mint, the improvements that they're making is going to trickle down to everybody. And let's say you like the Ubuntu Mate flavor. That's a lot of stuff's going on there too, man. We'll be taking a look at some of that um, a little bit later on. So there you go. Just a quick video. I'm excited about this. It should be really awesome. Um, it, it's going to be fun to see how this all shakes out. So thank you for watching the video. I certainly do appreciate it. Love your feedback. Love your comments. Man, the comments section has been jumping lately. Of course, I've been doing some opinion videos lately too. And anytime that I state an opinion, that happens. So uh, feel free to state yours as well, as long as you don't use any strong profanity or... Uh, post a lot of links or code in it, it should post, but uh, just, a, just a warning, just for those of you who are new to the channel, um, I don't really, uh, you know, profanity will be caught by the filters, and so will links, and any kind of code as well, so just keep that in mind, and those comments will go up for review, and I'll, I'll take a look at it and see, but a lot of the times I don't even see them these days, because they get caught and they don't get posted. So, there you go. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook, if you would. If you're a Facebook user, and if you don't have an extreme hatred for Facebook, then you be sure to check it out. We just crossed 3,000 likes today, which is just awesome. And also check out uh, Easy Linux on the web, and check out FreedomPenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. Links will be available in the description, also to the Fosbytes article there, so it's got some neat information in there. And that's it, and we'll do it again soon. Thank you so much for watching.